Good evening, everyone. My name is Andrew Scuddy. I work at Smooth Logics, and glad you could all make it to the West Michigan Lakeshore Solid Refusers Group on this fine Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. Um, we're going to talk about SolidWorks interface. This means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So if I'm going down a rabbit trail that you guys don't like, feel free to leave. I won't be offended. Evidently, a lot of people for many weeks or for many survey times have been requesting a presentation on the interface, which is a very broad topic. So I got voluntold, volunteered, however that went, to do interface. And um, I'll focus on a couple specific bits, and we'll see if it's what the survey people were looking for. I don't really have a lot of SOLIDWORKS files, so we'll be in PowerPoint a lot and talking about things. We'll jump to SOLIDWORKS to demo, but I don't really have like files to distribute after the, after the presentation like we have in weeks past. Um, yeah, a little about me. That's fine. So the SOLIDWORKS interface is anything, my definition, I should say, is anything that you can inter interact with, see, use, that type of thing. So you can see I took a myriad of screenshots here. We got the flyout pane, toolbar, breadcrumbs new to 2016, the confirm or cancel dialog with the D key new to 2016, in context menus, pop up menus, the toolbar menu, the feature manager, mouse gestures, all of that. Um, and then there's lots of other things on here that I don't have. If you've used SolidWorks over the years, you'll see that we get more and more flyout, pop up, um, context windows. They keep adding more and more to the software, which is always good. Uh, just a lot of manage, a lot of data to manage. So, we're, a lot of the presentation is going to be focused around leveraging the interface in SolidWorks. What can we do? How can we do it? And in what are the limitations and what are the best practices? I have some yes, no's, things to avoid, things to do. Uh, the goal of everything, if anybody that's ever been in one of my classes, um, I teach at a local school, or whether it's consulting or tech support or wherever it might be, it's always about wh what can we do with SolidWorks to make you more efficient, to make you more productive? What can we change? What can we do? What can we modify? So that as a designer, you get more done in less time. So this is going to be a little bit of a mixture of tips and tricks, what I found to work really well, and a lot of other things along the way. Who, th who thought everything I just said had something to do with interface, and that's what you're hoping to see here today? Sort of, yes, no? All right, so I guess we're in the right direction. Uh, first thing is double click in space to break chain while maintaining the line command. So in SolidWorks, um, I'm big on keyboard shortcuts because I find them the most efficient, and I'm a little bit old school. I've been using keyboard shortcuts before the S key came out, and now before the breadcrumbs came out and the mouse gestures came out. So I don't ne necessarily leverage those tools as much as others because I still think that the keyboard shortcuts is the most efficient. So I'm just going to be calling out keyboard shortcuts as I work um, and kind of just demonstrate to you how I leverage them. So I want to create a center point rectangle on the top plane. So I selected the top plane. I can't avoid that. And a lot of you will click here to start a sketch. If you go instantly to your sketch command in your toolbar, it will also instantly start a sketch. But I actually have a lot of keyboard shortcuts for 90% of my sketch features. So if I hold down Control and tap R, it'll instantly start a sketch, instantly put me in center point rectangle, and I can instantly start drawing. I don't have to start a sketch, click on rectangle, click on center point, click on the origin, and do something. I also bind the S key, which I know SolidWorks standard ha or SolidWorks by default pulls up the S key bar. But long before the S key bar existed, I used S key for my smart dimension. So it made sense to me in my head. So after I draw my rectangle, which I'll just redo here a minute, control R, rectangle, my cursor is already in one of the corners immediately by this. And this is also why I don't like right or mouse gestures, because I'm moving my mouse to pick another command. I want to avoid my mouse movement. My left hand is on the keyboard. It should be very readily accessible. So here I can just tap the S key, move down slightly, pick a line, and place my dimension. Move up slightly to the left, pick a line, and place my dimension. So my mouse moved from the origin to that very small corner there. And then I have another hotkey for extrude, so I can tap E to extrude. Choose midplane, because good properties I intent, my definition, dictates the origin is center mass. So we do midplane extrude, type in a command, and hit double enter. Now if I want to jump to other cuts or extrudes or evolves or whole wizard, I can keep doing that. I have U for whole wizard, which is not mapped here. So I also have F4 as a keyboard shortcut to customize. 
So the first customization I ever do in SolidWorks is to pull up my customization menu. So I can go to my keyboard and search for whole wizard and then assign that to you. So now I can tap you, it'll launch my whole wizard. And I still gotta go here and pick my specific sizes. So I want a tap hole and I want it to be quarter 20. The blind depth is what I want, positions, and put in my positions. Now, how would you guys control these points? I want these points for these holes in a particular location. Let's say I want them a half inch from the corner, or from each edge. So I want to put four holes in the corner. So I can do an offset. So do I have to convert any of these first? I think they changed this over the years. So I believe I can just pick this, click my offset tool. I don't have a keyboard shortcut for offset because I don't use it very much, but good idea. Type in my point five, choose my reverse, green check, and then I can drag these around, and then I have a single dimension here that if I change it, all of my holes are going to come in and go out accordingly. Right? Really good design intent. My holes are always in the corner. I have a single dimension, so if I need to update it, they're all going to update. Everything works just fine. Um, in SOLIDWORKS 2016, the D key is standard. It will pull your um, your OK and cancel buttons here. If you kick, hit the D key, it'll move those right to your mouse. So that's also super helpful in 2016. So that's a great way. Um, thanks. I always forget your name. So that is a great way, and I do see that used. Also, I can do just a rectangle. So if I don't have something to offset or if it's not quite the same, then here I can control R center point rectangle, and you can do this. And then I have K for center line. So I can drop a couple of points here. Sorry, I just skipped over that. K for center line. So I can drop one center line there. Now I want to stay in my center line command. I don't want to hit escape to get on my center line command, hit K or find the button again, heaven forbid, to go the center line command. But I want to draw another line from here to that edge. So if I just do if I double click in space, it'll maintain my center line command, but stop the chaining. And then I can click and place one over here. Another way to do it is if I know that I only want to draw a single segment, if I click and hold my mouse and move and click and let go, it'll place my center line for me without chaining. Or I can click, move, oops. Or I can click, move, and click, and then double click in space, and that will work as well. But all different interface hints that we can make ourselves better and more productive designers, that's more efficient. And then, of course, here I can place my points. Um, and like so. Evidently, I thought my 2016 was more configured than it is. I might switch to 2015 here in a minute. Besides, I showed all the cool 2016 things. Um, P for point is what I use. So if I'm in here editing my sketch, P for point, I can drop my points around. And then I also have I for insert or edit sketch. So Think of any command, any button, any feature, anything that you could possibly do in SOLIDWORKS with a mouse clicking on something, you can also do with a keyboard. And we're going to take this to kind of an extreme extent. Um, but if I tap I now, instead of coming over, so the D key works really well, but if in 2015 or if the D key isn't natural, I have I to get in and get out of a sketch. So if I just tap I now, it'll instantly get me out of my sketch. So I can click on a sketch and tap I to get into it, do whatever I want, tap I and get out of it. Um, I might try 2015 here just to see if that's going to be any better for me. Um, back to our PowerPoint. <coughs> Oops. Uh, we all know window left and right drag, right? I see some nods, not all nods. So this is pretty fun. In SolidWorks, if I've got a bunch of geometry, and I only want to select some of this and not all of this. If I drag my from if I make a drag window from the right side to the left side, it doesn't matter if I go up or down, if I start on the top left, top right and go left, or if I stop on the bottom and go up, anything that touches that window, or anything that's wholly inside of that window, it will select. If I go left to right, you can see right to left is green. If I go left to right, it's blue and only things that are wholly captured inside of that window can I select. So I can select this circle here if I wholly capture it, and it doesn't matter what else is 
engaged. Or if I just want these two things, I can kind of just box those two little areas, for whatever reason my selection graphics card isn't working here, and grab those two items. Um, another hint is if I want to transition to an arc, this is fairly well known. If I come back and touch my points, it'll then arc off. And depends on what quadrant I arc off on, it'll create an arc. It'll create a perpendicular arc that's tangent, tangent arc, tangent forward, tangent backwards. And so if I'm trying to draw something that looks like this, I can arc like so. And now what happens if I draw an arc here and I want this line to be horizontal? So I have two options. I can click on the witness line. So you can see in SOLIDWORKS, any sketch relation that's yellow is what SOLIDWORKS will place if you click. But any sketch relation um, that's white is just a reference, hey, FYI, this, like if we try to do this, that white vertical sketch relation is just saying you're, you happen to be in the place on the screen that's vertical to the center of that arc. But it's not actually going to place a vertical sketch relation. Only sketch relations that are yellow, as seen on that tangent, will place a sketch relation. So I want this line here to be tangent to that arc. So I want to click here because I want it to be tangent, but I also want this line to be vertical, or horizontal, I'm sorry. So I'm, I'm stuck. I either got to place it horizontal, escape out at some point, come back over here. Now, how many of you click and then hold on control and click again? Like everybody, right? That's what we're taught to do. No offense to any AEs. But in basic essentials, they're taught click, hold on control, and click. Well, if we leverage our window select, I can click here with much less accuracy, quickly move my mouse, let go, and then come over here and make tangent. I don't ever have to touch my control key. And now, again, it's left, it's it's right to left drag. If I drag left to right, I gotta come way up here and make sure I grab those two entities and only those two entities so that I can make it tangent. So that would be my first suggestion, is that if you can um, window select when possible and when able instead of holding down control and long picking a bunch of uh, um, entities. But we're still down to my original conundrum. I want this line to be tangent to that arc, but I also want it to be horizontal. So with my version of SOLIDWORKS, and I should check my hotkey first because, you know, it might not actually work. Yeah, okay. So the way I have my SOLIDWORKS set up is I have hotkeys for a lot of sketch relation entries. So if I click on this, notice that SOLIDWORKS will highlight the last line that I placed, or the last sketch entity. So that line is now highlighted, and notice SOLIDWORKS automatically added the tangency relationship between the line and the arc. But because this line is highlighted, I can now, on my keyboard, tap H, which I have mapped to make horizontal. And then I can keep sketching and say, touch again, and I want to arc up over here, like so. And then I want this to be, again, tangent, but vertical. So I can click, tap V, and make it vertical. I have Control T to be power trim, and I can trim those two entities off, and then Control, or just simple E to extrude, make a midplane, two inches, whatever it might be. Never having to click off, never having to go to my sketch relations, not having to hit escape and then make that tangent or go back or anything like that. Um, I have F for fillet, so I can just grab that, type in a dimension, double enter, etc. Uh, so that was our click left, click right. Toolbars on demand. Um, I should have gotten a screenshot, I forgot to mock it up. but. If you find somebody that has used SOLIDWORKS since, let, let's say, 1999, and I think the toolbar came out in 2008 or something, 2007, or the, yeah, the um, ribbon toolbar up top here, command manager, whatever they call it. Yeah, command manager. But you, you find people that have been using toolbars forever, and then the command manager comes out and they're like, oh, I don't like that. And you ask them why, and they're like, well, because it's different, and I don't like it, and I always knew that my fillet was on the bottom left of my screen, and that's where I always went, and that's where I liked it, and I don't like change. Okay, that's fine. Um, the benefits of the command manager is it only shows you the icons that you need to use in the environment in which you're working. So if I'm working in solids, I have my features tab selected, and I only see my solid feature options. If I'm working in sheet metal, I click on sheet metal, weldments, et cetera, et cetera. The one exception that I personally have to that is sketching. No matter what I do, I'm always sketching. There's not anything you do in SOLIDWORKS where you don't sketch, unless you're just given a lot of things to make in an assembly, which that would be a really boring job. And so I have a sketching toolbar here, always present, always visible, because no matter what, I'm always using it if I don't have a keyboard shortcut that's mapped to it. 
The one exception to that is I will often use the configurations toolbar, which for some reason I'm blind because I don't see up it. To. Up to. Thank you. See, I was blind. And I drag it over here. Uh, because it's a little bit easier than clicking over here and double clicking on something. So if I want to change configurations, I can, which I, this isn't obviously configured. But I've come to learn and leverage the configurations toolbar and the sketch toolbar. Everything else is a command manager. Now let's say I'm in surfacing. Turn that on. Let's say I'm in surfaces. Let me open up one of my surface demo example files. So I'm in surfacing and I want to do something and the command isn't on my surfacing toolbar. So everybody's familiar with the search command option in the upper right hand corner, right? We've all used it, we've all loved it because there's something that we don't know where it exists and we want to find it. So I want to do heel edges. All right. First of all, this isn't really part of my presentation. I just really love it. If you click on the little glasses, it'll kind of show you where to find something. So you can go find it next time if you don't want to search for it every time. But better yet, when you search for something and you get the results, who knew that you can just click this and drag it wherever you want it to go? You can do it all the time and everything. You can't do that all the time and everything. If I try to drag this now, it won't let me drag that. Yeah, but what I mean is you can do it in the other ones too. You can have it on the sketch or features or evaluate. Yeah, you can drag it wherever you want. Yeah, yep. that's the advantage of the command management. Some people don't know how to use it. That's why they prefer that. Or right, so I can drag this into my toolbar. I can hover over, I think, maybe not. I think I got to switch to something. Yeah, oops. Um, and then I can kind of drag it and put it wherever I want. So that's super cool. Don't come in your preview window when it doesn't work. I'm sorry? If you go down and over, then I don't think it works. You got to stay um, up there. I believe it does. it does. If you just drop it here, it cancels your command. But you can still place it, at least in 2016, you might have different mileage and different versions. Um, so what happens if I want to reorder this? So if I'm on my features toolbar, um, tab in the command manager rather and I accidentally added heel edges who knows how to get rid of that uh -huh. who, how, how do I get rid of heel edges how do I make it go away because I don't want it there I accidentally placed it or it's a feature I never use or a feature I'm not supposed to use or whatever it might be so if I click on it and drag it it doesn't work so if I go to customize which I have mapped to F4 and then if I click and drag, it does work. But that's kind of silly, especially if you don't have cust or not silly, no offense. Um, it, it, it's kind of heavy handed because if, especially if I don't have that mapped, I gotta go to tools. If I have a small screen, scroll down, customize, and then just to drag this off to close out. Anybody have an, another idea on how to quickly manipulate icons on your screen without going into customize? Hold down a key. Yes, another key. Um, this is not my SOLIDWORKS shortcut. This is or mine. This is a SOLIDWORKS one. If anybody was here, I think I'm almost a year ago, I think the first meeting held here at FOG was Darren Grosser, and he talked about um, all about the Alt key. The Alt key will allow you to drag and drop anything you want, and if you drag it into your graphics view or somewhere where it's not supposed to go, it'll just get rid of that button for you. So the Alt key is a live edit in yeah, graphics artifacts. The Alt key is a live edit of any icons on your toolbar. The only time you don't need the Alt key is if you're dragging from your search command or your search bar. So that's super helpful. So my, my general encouragement is fit your tab or customize your tabs in your command manager apart from your sketch toolbar to always work or to always offer the commands you need in a particular environment. The reason why I don't like the sketch toolbar up here is because it's too many clicks. If I go here and insert a sketch, which again I have as I, it switches to my sketch toolbar. So of course I don't even want to click up here, but I'm doing it for effect. Do something like that. Again, I'm doing this for effect. I hate going up there and clicking. Okay, now I'm done. I want to extrude cut this. I gotta click features. And as my eyes can't find my next command until I switch my tab. So I'm losing time, so I first gotta find which tab to click on, features, and then I gotta search for which icon I need, which is extrude cut, and then I can actually get to my extrude cut. If the sketch tab isn't on my command manager at all and it's over to the right, or even better yet, if you use keyboard shortcuts, so you can just go like this, then I never even have to touch a command and I can perform an extrude cut on the fly. Oh, the delete key also deletes things, but that's not my shortcut either. Um, does that make sense to everybody? 
So quite literally, any command, any feature, anything you would ever click on in SolidWorks, you can map to the keyboard. At least I have not found anything that you can't. Um, I would point out that you can also do lots of fun combinations. I should get back to my slide. I don't know where we are. Oh, so mouse gestures also came out after, mouse gestures and the S key came out after um, I started using a lot of keyboard shortcuts. So I've never really capitalized on their use because I use keyboard and I think it's better anyway. Um, another thing I have here in the PowerPoint is toolbars on demand. So it depends on what environment and what I'm doing, but I use my selection filters a lot, especially when I'm doing surfacing, reverse engineering, and working with lots of fine details. The selection manager helps exponentially. But I don't always want it on my screen. So I can right click somewhere, find my selection, and again, I'm probably going to be blind. Selection filter? There it is. Okay. Or you can bind it to a hotkey. I have F5 to turn toolbars on and off this particular toolbar on and off. So if you want a toolbar, if you want your direct editing toolbar to show up while you're doing something and go away, find a hotkey, find a function key, F5 works, that you aren't using otherwise, and remember, hey, if I just want this, I can say faces only, click on the few faces I want, you can hit F5, make it go away, and then we can right click and delete those or whatever you want to do with it. But you can bind, and then now it's funny because I have a selection on my cursor with no selection toolbar, so F5 again to clear all that, oops, not turn them all on, clear all that, make it go away. So toolbars on command will save you real estate, save you screen space, not have toolbars scattered all over the place, and help you get ingrained in uh, standard usage. So no matter what environment, if I start sheet metal, I click on my sheet metal tab once, and now no matter what I'm doing, I know that I can always go to the top left, find my command, do what I want to do, and be good. I don't ever have to be searching around other parts of my screen. All right, customizing rules. So this is fun. SolidWorks customization should not be confused with template standards and system settings. Is anybody here a system CAD admin? You update the settings, templates, radar, nobody else? Okay. So if you're customizing something, I hope you, I'm sure you understand this principle. But if you're customizing something, the customization should stay on your computer. And I think I have that as one of my very last points. General rule of thumb, anything you customize should be localized to your computer only. If I customize something and that customization changes with the file and goes to my coworker, that's a bad customization, my opinion. Um, we don't want to do that because I don't want to, if, and, and there's another point in here where you don't change colors of things. You can go into, and Richard Doyle is famous for this, um, great guy, he's just famous for this, where he'll like go to your coworker's computer and change the color of the dimensions on the drawing to white. If you highlight the dimension, you can see it. Because like when you're drawing loads, you can see all your dimensions, and as soon as it re resolves and rebuilds, all your dimensions disappear. But if you hover over it, you can find them. Okay, that's an example of very bad customization. Don't ever do that. I've worked with some people that would change their part templates so that their planes were orange because they liked orange. Well, then every single other person that opens their part, their planes are orange, which just throws people off. You can change, I think you can even change the color of a defined sketch. So you could say a defined sketch is blue and an underdefined sketch is black. Then you draw a line that's instantly black. Like, don't do that ever. <laughs> Right, but 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 we want to customize things to make you more efficient, not because you prefer the color of orange over blue. That's ridiculous. And everybody who's complaining about the new 2016 icons, get over it. Um, moving on. <laughs> so. They changed them specifically claiming that it was better for people with color blindness. And I've heard people that say the exact opposite, and I think it depends on if you're, what type of color blind you may be. But we, we want to change things to make it, make it more efficient. Keyboard shortcuts is a great example of that. Another point, customization is context sensitive. If you customize something in a part, um, in a part for part specific commands, it's only available there, as opposed to assembly, as opposed to drawings. So. For instance, you can't have a keyboard shortcut that does an annotation view and expect that to work in a part environment. So you have to be a little bit cognizant of that. Um, all SolidWorks settings, if you didn't know, are saved in the Windows registry. Windows registry has proven itself to be anything but reliable. So if you open SolidWorks and something changed, 
it's perfectly fine to call tech support and complain to them, but it's really a Windows problem, in my experience. Windows 7, 8, and 10 have been much, much better, and SolidWorks, I don't know if they did something or not, but 2015 seems to be very, very stable in that regard. But from an admin standpoint, too, you can push settings from the server through the Windows registry if you start hacking some registry files apart. Um, you can save all of your SolidWorks customization through the SolidWorks copy settings wizard. Does everybody, everybody knows what that is? Otherwise, I'll launch it to show you, but if everybody nods their head, we'll move on. Okay. Uh, and then mac macros can capture any amount of commands together and execute in a consistent way. So if you want to do a lot of extrude midplanes, you can make, write a macro that will launch the extrude command, select your um, direction one and choose midplane and tie that to a key. So like maybe alt E, so E is my extrude, so maybe alt E is an extrude midplane or control E might be an extrude cut through all or something like that. So macros are there, I'm not covering macros, but just throwing that out there. Uh, everything literally almost can be customized inside of SolidWorks. So all of these um, context pop-up toolbars, if I click on this and let's say I never ever ever want to hide the body, because that's just kind of silly, in my opinion. I'm theorizing here, I do it all the time. So if I want that to go away, I can right click and customize. And the graphics area, when clicking on an object, this is what shows up in the graphics area. I can remove anything I want and add anything I want um, at my own will. For whatever reason, it's not letting me remove something. That seems broken. I can add things, maybe. I'm going to blame 2016 because this works in 2015. So I don't know what's up with that. But that's how you'd get to that. And I should have ran my demo in 2015. Which, did that load? We'll do that. Um, Holding down the Alt key, we covered. Performing a search, we covered. Customizing primary goals are speed, efficiency, and usability. If you're not getting those benefits, rethink it. Um, and that's really serious. I mean, if I'm going to go out of my way to change something in SolidWorks, and it's not helping me do something faster, better, more efficiently, more intuitively, whatever it might be, that change is probably not worth it. Um, Right-click menus. So this is fun. So right-click menus here are customizable. If I click the little ellipses, whatever they're called, I can go down to Customize Menu, and I can check and uncheck whatever I do and don't want to see. The lasso select is a kind of a cool command. I'm glad SolidWorks came up with it. I, however, never use it. So I never want to see that. I never want to accidentally click and change to lasso select as opposed to rectangle select. Yes? I have a question that I might not need later than this, but can you change the, the view to where it would show you all the options on, like, if you go on the um, on the menu over there on the top there, like file, edit, view. Okay. Not that one, not the third one. Oh, okay. view? Oh, you're using 15 instead. Yeah, I, I can jump to 16. Yeah, can you, yeah, show me that. Can you make it so that, so that you don't have to go to um, show or Oh, hide? Um, you mean the added menu and submenus? Yeah. Can you change that? that I don't know. I don't know how. I think, I think they did a several things in 2016 to accommodate smaller screens, real estates, because they're going to like tablets and other things. And so notice when I right click here to do toolbars, they split it. And because things were getting really long, used to go to tools and have to arrow down forever. So I think they're starting to nest things a layer deeper in a lot of these menus. Yeah, I'm not aware problem. of a way to get rid of that. Can you just try customize? Or is it just check on things? See, now on the... Uh on the menu menu. Yeah. On the view? Click on it. Go to one of those arrows. Yeah, I can just yeah. turn workspace on or off. Okay. So then if I go to view and go to workspace, I can customize my workspace menu. Yeah. But I'm not aware of trying to combine everything back. Yeah, I'm saying, can you customize your menu as well? I don't think so. You can only turn off what's there. You can't add anything else. So I can't add anything yeah, to like this I, menu. I want to dissolve the option of having to go there to see four other options. I, I don't think there's an option for that in 2015 or in 2016. I guess the option would be to keep using 2015. Well, I, need to <laughs> I, I understand. Yeah, sorry, I can't can't help you there. Um, so a lot of people find this a little bit weird that I might want to turn things off. I've gotten the tech support phone calls before, where they're like, "Man, I might I might um we'll do view here a minute." On my coworker's computer, if he goes to view, he's got options that I don't even have. Like, I repaired SolidWorks 15 times, and they're still not there. 
Um, and you're like, okay, well, let's see if that ever got customized. Oh, yeah, see, look, display, modify, and lights and cameras, they're turned off. So if you check that box, then they'll come back. And that has irritated a lot of people over the years. And so SolidWorks has added a customization tab that says shortcut customization show all and menu customization show all. So it's kind of like a not SolidWorks standard vanilla because they by default hide some things which I find odd as well. But it's kind of like a SolidWorks we're sick of the complaining and let's just turn everything on because that's what some people asked for. And then the restore to defaults would be back to your SolidWorks vanilla restore defaults thing. The interesting thing is is that you can still, I'm not, I don't want to click that, but if you do click that, you can still customize and turn things off. So it's just like a once setting show everything, you can still hide things that you don't want. Um, yeah, so as I said, your right click menus, your view menus, those are all customizable using the customize menu um, option down at the bottom. Mouse gestures can be enabled four or eight options and turned off. Mouse gestures and ASCII have four different contexts, part, assembly, drawing, and sketch. Again, I'm not a big fan of mouse gestures and ASCII, but if the keyboard shortcut isn't your cup of tea and you're clicking on everything now, I would encourage you to work on the ASCII and the mouse gestures because it's better than clicking on icons all the time. But if you're game for using your keyboard and um, leveraging the keyboard customization for speed and efficiency, I do believe that is a far superior method uh, inside of SOLIDWORKS. Standard toolbars can be added or removed to. Uh, any in-context pop-up menus can be edited by right-click and setting customize. If you want to see everything, we just went over that. So these are my thoughts on um, customization. Maintaining, and this is kind of what I went back to, you see somebody using SOLIDWORKS since 1998 and they have like 15 toolbars scattered all over their screen and their graphics view is like this small in the middle and you wonder how they get any work done. Um, I, I, I do not encourage doing your copy settings and saving them year after year after year. Because what happens is SolidWorks is going to add new features. It's like if any of you do surfacing, the boundary surface is a new feature. The flattened surface, wherever that went, is a new feature if you have premium. So if you restore your settings every single year, you are arbitrarily restricting your SolidWorks usage to whatever buttons and whatever commands and whatever features you are used to when you set up those settings in the beginning. So every single year, I personally make it as a discipline, and I strongly encourage all the users that I interact with to do this, except the SOLIDWORKS defaults. When you install SOLIDWORKS Fresh, just say, install SOLIDWORKS. Don't customize anything ever, ever, ever. Don't carry over your settings. And then as you're working, the things that you can't stand, the things that are slowing you down, the, the um, R for rectangle, the control R for center point rectangle, the C for circle, those you can bring back. And then again, if you customize your customized menu, am I out of time? Oh well. If you customize your customized menu and go to um, keyboard, you can define that very easily. So make coincident, hit X. So now when I draw something like this, I can select my point and select this and hit X. Oops. Select my circle rather and my point and hit X and make it coincident. And then I can select this point and my line and hit J and make it midpoint. So I would do vanilla settings and change what you have to change to maintain your sanity as opposed to carry your settings over every single year. Um, some of the downsides, if your computer set up for you, you're super efficient and as soon as you go to your coworkers and try to show them something, and then your keyboard shortcuts work, you can't find anything and you're a blind guy hunting around for icons that you haven't looked at in three weeks. And it's something that just happens. Um, unless you're the admin, you just push them to everybody. <laughs> Train them, change it before the new guy comes. You can also combine keyboard shortcuts. So these are some of the so standard SOLIDWORKS one, but control, sh control shift Z undoes your view rotation. So if you zoom in on something and you rotate, and you're like, oh, dang it, I lost it. Control shift Z will bring that back. And that's a so standard SOLIDWORKS one. So if you go home now, it should work just fine. That's not to be confused with control Z, which is basically your um, edit undo menu. Hitting the highlights here because I think I'm out of time. Uh, SolidWorks has also done a very good job at maintaining Windows things. So Control A will select all, Control C will copy, Control V will paste, Control X will cut, Control V will paste. You've got what, what, what you think would work in Windows will often work in SolidWorks. I discourage, um, or that does not enhance productivity, we covered that. 
non-standard solid or non-standard company templates, whatever it might be. And then customizations that trans that transfer with the file. You want it to stay on your computer. And that's all I have. Any questions on any of that? Hopefully everybody learned something. Hopefully that was interfaces that everybody was hoping to learn, see. Since, uh, since Justin is here, can we go to uh -oh. this file <laughs> open where you have some parts stored? Yes, sir. Um, like here? Yeah. Okay. What, I mean, SolidWorks is a graphics program. Yep. That thumbnail is pathetic. Why it is. Can, why can't that thumbnail grow with that window? Why can't this be e drawing so I can just start rotating it, why embedded it in the window shell? Right. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Now, I understand if that's a complex <laughs> assembly, that would be pushing it really hard. But e if you have a fairly yeah. complex assembly or thousands of parts you're trying to find, and all you have is this micro graphic uh, that yep. no matter what you do to Windows settings, and you can hack the registry and turn it to 256 um, if you know how to hack the registry. Yep. But so I think that's just a pixelized. Yep. Small picture. I think that's probably a little outside of the scope of this presentation, but the answer to that is PDM, and that's what Justin will tell you, and that's what anybody will tell you. Um, I was actually going to say it's possibly file size to start with, as in keep the file picture small. And oh, okay. Choose the file size, but, but but as far as finding content. It's a fair enough point as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so. I'm big on customization. The, the, the 90 percentile of the keyboard shortcuts I use the most is in sketching because it's something that transcends all environments and we all use it all the time. I strongly encourage you to start using sketching. Um, I have literally every single sketching command except for like uh, I think offset and text. But I have mirror so I can highlight these, control M, whoops. Highlight these, control M, mirror it around, um, convert entities, so I can pick on something and G to convert entities. Like anything, sketching is the most frequently used command set in SolidWorks. Sign, assign it to keyboard shortcuts and leverage that information. I think that um, it does make things quick, but I don't think that it's necessarily quicker than using that command manager. Because if you use that command manager, you can actually be quicker with the command manager than with all those keyboards. It depends on if you have muscle memory. Um, the comment was the command manager is just as fast as keyboard. It depends if you have muscle memory because there's no way that you can take your mouse, go over here, click the drop down, and hit center point rectangle, come back here and click, when I can just hold down control, tap R, and go like this. Correct. I actually use both of them. Okay. I actually think that you can actually be quicker with that command manager depending on how quick you are and how much you use it. But the whole point is the less mouse movement, the faster you're going to be yeah, but because you still have to click. So if I can tap a keyboard without moving my mouse and simulate a click on my mouse of a button that I didn't have to navigate to. But I just think that you can probably find that thing a lot quicker than you can actually go and click that thing there. It, it, it depends on if you can memorize your keyboard with your left hand or not. Well, so you, you should know your keyboard with both hands. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, right, but, but I only have my left hand on my keyboard. Right. So if I have my left hand on my home row key, and my major commands are the, the, the 9 or 12 keys right around my home row left hand key, using control and alt as a combination. So like alt s is my, um, um, I think, or maybe that was shift s, I don't know. But, but the point is your, your keyboard can do so much more than most people give it credit for. You can do everything. You can yeah, and especially like your H to make horizontal, your V to make vertical. Um, and I also have this. So I do um, tangency, so I can box select and just tap T for make tangent. Uh, you can do Y to make equal. Yeah, do anything you want. That. I'm sorry? Can you just pick on the point? Pick on a point for what? To make tangent. Um, so in 2015, 16, I don't remember what it is. You can. Um, so that's new, and again, I've been doing the tangency a lot longer than that. But still, I find it easier to to get somewhat close, box select and just tap your keyboard, as opposed to get right in there, make sure you grab the exact point and then have to click again. So it's two clicks as opposed to a click and drag and a key keyboard tap. And the main thing is once you click and drag and you select those entities, your mouse can start coming over here and do something else while the rest of your mind and hand is tapping T, so you can actually duplicate a lot of your time by leveraging that information. So. I honestly don't remember when I was supposed to end, so I don't know. 
Um, some other customizations, and I do think it's 8.15 because we end at 8.30. Unless everybody's bored and we just want to leave. Anything else we want to? 8.15. 8.15, so perfect. Thank you, Todd. Just the area, though, is when you're using one of the space controllers, so you have your left hand on one controller. And yep. I don't like I don't like the space controllers or the 3D con um, devices. So personally, I don't find that as a um, time saver. But if it works for you, that's fine. We're just here to try to give you other ideas to make stuff faster and more efficient. Do you have a shortcut for the recent commands? So um, enter. Actually. So enter will pull up the last one. Yeah, enter. So like if I fill it this. There's also, if you right click, you get uh, uh, recent commands as well on the command oh, yeah. screen. I oh, re recent I, here. I use that a lot. Um, I don't know a faster way, but. Yeah, so again, if, if, if the recent commands are something used very frequently, I would still contend that tapping a key on your keyboard without having to look at your keyboard using muscle memory is still going to be faster than right clicking, finding a sub menu, and finding a command that are ever, ever changing order. Right. That's not necessarily true. That's not an argument. That's but not the true. You can set that up before you actually know where everything is in the command menu. But you're moving your mouse a lot more. You're breaking the gaze from your graphics design view to the command manager. You're clicking the command. Well, you're coming back and clicking on something is, else. I use the keys a lot, especially when I'm hearing anything something quick. All I'm saying is that it's not necessarily true. If you actually know how to use the program really well, you can pretty much like put two guys who uses the key and then somebody who does the sketches, and they will take like the same amount of time to do the work. So we're talking about personal preference. Yeah, personal preference. I, I like the keyboard. I find it far faster and far more efficient than any other usage of the software with very common standardized commands. Um, I always have the exceptions. Every once in a while, I have to come over here and find the text tool and find the intersection curve tool, um, especially, and I do a lot of solid modeling, so I don't really have any, any sheet metal keyboard shortcuts, any weldment keyboard shortcuts. Other than the standard ones like Fillet, there's nothing in surfaces that I have keyboard shortcuts for. So in those environments, I'm always going back to here to find something. But when I'm in my 90% case solid modeling world, I can come over here and just start um, doing whatever I want to do. So even if you're chaining points together, I can now hit V to make that vertical, H to make that horizontal, and then D in 2016 will bring this. So if I'm working over here, D in 2016 will bring my um, OK and I can accept that, and then I can start. Oh, there you go with a drag and drop. But you can start doing this and then that, and then I have control, control W for revolve cut, so I can cut that through there. You can literally, um, so I started this 10, nine, 10 years ago when I was sick of finding all my stuff because before I had the command manager. So for a week, this is how nerdy I was, maybe still am, for a week, I kept track of how many, what commands I used, and at the end of the week, tallied up all of my frequent, most commonly used commands. So then I went to my keyboard and said, all right, now, in my mind, what makes sense? A makes sense for that to be arc. S makes sense to be smart dimension. E makes sense to be extrude. The key right next to it, W, makes sense for cut extrude. Control E, or um, um, revolve. No, yeah, yeah, revolve. I don't know. See, I just hit the keys. I don't really think about it. Um, so if I draw something here, E, E will extrude, W, we need escape to get out of things. I think that's been an enhancement request for a while. W will cut extrude, uh, and of course you've got your right mouse click. I didn't add that, I should have. Everybody's familiar with the right mouse click, right? So if I drag this around, on the cursor you have what looks like a mouse and you have a green check on the right mouse click button. Without moving your mouse, and this obviously predates 2016, without hitting the D key to get the OK to get to your mouse, you can just right mouse click and it will um, resolve. The same thing works, delete my fillet. The same thing works if you're in a multi select command manager. So in items to fillet, if I do a face fillet, I gotta click here, and now it's no, instead of a, a green check, as in like OK, get out of the feature, there's like a return check, which means go to the next selection menu. So I can right click here and then click on that, and it will. And then I can right click now and get out of that. So it's all about minimizing mouse travel, reducing as many steps as possible to accomplish the same thing with the same commands, just simply more efficiently. Could you combine it with macros? Uh, macros, you can do anything you freaking want. But like, could you combine it with where you don't have to go tools and, and 
in on the macro, that's what I'm saying. Yes, yep. So in, in your F4 customized menu, there is under commands, there is a macro somewhere. This has been a while, and I'm blind, so there we go. And then we have the run, oops. Yep, the run macro button, you drag it wherever you want. You say okay. I think if you right click on it, maybe not. Well, that's what I was saying. Could you combine it where you actually just use a key to run it, but you don't have to? Yeah. Do yep. No problem. Um, the last one. It's the last one. Thank you. It's been a while. When you do that, you browse here for your macro button, which I won't be able to find one. So we'll just fake it. Um, this is going to be its SWP, right? Yeah. Desktop. Um, so I'll just go to my desktop. SWP. Hopefully this doesn't crash all it works. That'd be really funny. Um, so there I picked my macro. Oh, it can't open it. Oh, whatever. But you'd pick your method, which there are none. You can choose your icon. So yay for icons. Um, and then I believe somehow you're going to sign a keyboard, but it's been a while. And then you would just click on the keyboard, not necessarily. Yep, you can click on a keyboard, launch a macro, and a macro can do any number of functions for you um, all chained together, however you program that macro. Um, so yeah, so like I was saying, if I draw something here, like so, oops, that's supposed to be that. If I hold down Control E, it'll revolve that. If I hold down Control W, it'll cut revolve that. Um, a normal E is an extrude, a W is cut extrude. So I have similar keys that make sense in my head using the Control Alt and Shift key in, com in combination with those keys. So on my left hand, I've got about 12 keys that are pretty similar that I can do with muscle memory. And then combining that with sh Control Alt and Shift in any combination, you can basically get 100 commands that you can fairly easily remember if you can logically lay them out in some way. And then I started running out of logical things, so I have like G to convert entities because I just didn't know what else to do. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what else I got here. Z I use for measure. So how many of us use measure? So here's my challenge to you. Pick a shortcut or pick a key that makes sense to you. Make it M, I don't care. And bind the measure tool to it because we all use measure all of the time. Uh, in an assembly, or, or, or use a mouse gesture. Uh, again, mouse gestures are better than hunting for an icon on a toolbar, but a keyboard shortcut I still can, um, can sit or um, contest, thank you, sir. I still contest is a f um, superior and more efficient method. So in assemblies, I have a couple assembly specific keyboard shortcuts. This is the thing I don't like about mouse gestures is that they're environmentally specific. So mouse gesture to the right in sketch mode might be line, in feature mode might be extrude, in assembly mode might be mate. You can and change that though. Like you can make it all the same. You can, but, but mate doesn't do me any good in parts. And line doesn't do me any good unless I'm in a sketch. So all the ones that you want constant, you put the same. Right, but there's very few commands that are constant through all four environments. So if I have a maximum of eight mouse gestures times by four environments. So if I'm only going to do consistent ones through all environments, then I'm really limiting what I can actually put in there. Your keyboard you can be much more dynamic with, in my opinion. So if we have something like this, I have M for mate. So we all know we can control select and then just hit these as if you're in Ryan's call presentation, but I also have mate, so if I need to do something a little bit more complex, we can do my advanced angle mate, 50, minimum of zero, sure, whatever, and then you can get some stuff like this. Well, that's not going to work anyway, but beside the point. So then in drawings, I have B for balloon, N for notes, uh, just whatever it might be, whatever makes sense to you, whatever is fast and efficient. If anybody's interested, I can publish my list of keyboard shortcuts, but I would much rather you go through the exercise, find what makes sense for you, because you're gonna remember them much better if you can make the mental coordination between E and extrude, and that makes sense for you, even though I might have something radically different. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to contact me. This is recorded, so it'll be on the website whenever the user group uh, publishes the videos, because I don't really have any solid content to give you this time, so it'll just be the PowerPoint and the video. But let me know if you have any questions or any other ideas or hints that I missed. I'm all ears. Any other questions or anything? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks.